if we could do with business what what the ADA did within American society. That's a win. There are multiple ways in which people can participate in the work world, no matter what ability they have. The reason why I think I want to be so visible with my disability is I know that the majority of disabilities are invisible. And I want to give people the permission to share their stories and be proud in their identities. I have to show up to work every day and say, blackness is important, disability is important, gender is important. So what do we owe ourselves in this time of celebration? It's time to flip our celebration to determination. So in the next 30 years, we see a faster pace of change. Managing our courage with our fear will help us be better and will help us have a greater impact on society and make way for that workforce of the future that simply values humans for what they bring and how they show up. We also have to keep their legacy alive by continuing to do the hard work that's going to be that's going to be necessary to go beyond just talking and being intentional about actions. So with the ADA, I think that this is a great moment of celebration. And as we celebrate honoring where we came, is to look forward to say, where do we really want to go? I've felt for a long time that the disability community can learn a lot from the LGBT community and the idea of bringing your whole self to work, being out at work, being out in general, and the benefits of that. So I'm hoping 30 years from now, the people with disabilities in the workplace are much more comfortable kind of owning and leveraging their disability identities and lived experience with their disabilities at work, and that we have more people with disabilities at all levels of a company. 30 years from now, I would like to think about work for um, workplace um, to be a rainbow of colors, rainbow of abilities. Um, I think that we all need to be working together. We as people with disability can, um, can be a leader, whether you have an intellectual disability, whether you have letters behind people's names, it doesn't matter. We all can, can contribute to the workforce. I would hope that inclusion is just totally ingrained in corporate culture and it's no longer an initiative um, and it, it's some and not something that needs a, a, a task force or a dedicated team. It's, it's really part of the central nervous system of a company and it's lived every day and you can see it both vertically and horizontally within an organization. I mean, in my perspective, that's what makes um, any organization great is that we have people working together for a greater mission. And um, that includes, of course, people with disabilities. We have a long ways to go. We, it's not time for us to sit back and see what you know what what's going to come there's a lot of work to be done and it's not going to be just a handful of people we need to get people to work because at the end of the day economic independence is real independence and um and people need to realize that and the fastest way to get economic independence is to go to work oh the power of a job is is infinite it's the creation of somebody I think of competitive integrated employment for everybody. Um, I think of no exceptions to the rule. So my hope for the next 30 years is that we finally get to a place where there are no stigmas related to disabilities and everyone can bring their full authentic selves to work. So now that we're rebuilding and we have all of these voices, we can ensure that we're not, we're not overlooking trans lives or not overlooking the lives of people with disabilities, whether they be visible or not visible, that we're not overlooking all of those various intersections and how they hit people. What we need to work on as a community is how intentional are we and have we been on including people with disabilities of color 
in our conversations when we think about who we are hiring and again, who is at the table. My hope is that it no longer is something that has to be called out and pushed for, but instead is automatically part of the hiring process and automatically is represented in the workforce. I would say right now, the focus on all of this has to be people. It is people first. When they do that, they will focus on enabling and empowering all team members to be their best selves. I think about real inclusive environments as being equitable and flexible. 30 years from now, it doesn't really matter uh, what kind of a race, a gender, or um, um, you know, background or ability that with the technology is part of the underpinning that we can all do what we are meant to do on this earth. And they'll be using a host of people who have finite expertise in a specific area that's really great and really wanted by a company. Hopefully the workplace in the next 30 years is already fully incorporated with people of all abilities and every race, gender, ethnicity, sexual orientation, it should represent every human being in America. And that they, that we have a place where, and by the way, a place where everyone is being paid a minimum wage or above, well above, hopefully. That's the workplace I dream of. And I hope it's not 30 years from now. I hope it's sooner as opposed to later. And you'll find that when you make them a valued member of the team, some of the solutions and strategies that are generated, again, through their lived experience and problem solving, generate strategies that help everybody be a better, more effective, more efficient um, staff member. You want to employ people that actually love their work, that they're passionate about their work, and they can form a great team. Kindness and humanity are going to guide us through the future. We are challenging employers to move beyond the minimum legal standards. We're challenging employers to take a growth mindset and make a commitment to equity in the workplace.